I'm not Ghali Al-Mawali, a pediatric surgeon. And like most of the people I know in the medical profession, I spent most of my life chasing after the straight A's. Since my days in school, I had perfect academic reports full of A's. I graduated among the top three students in high school, got into medical school with ease, and my striving for academic accomplishments and achievements followed me through college and through surgical training. I, uh, I basically, uh, you know, was a nerd all my life. I graduated in 2011, first in my class, and was honored to give the graduation speech of honor. Then I got accepted into a very competitive scholarship to study general surgery and pediatric surgery abroad in a very competitive university in Canada, in which I managed to finish a master's degree with excellence and honor, and continued an excelling performance throughout my training. In addition, I won two prestigious awards in British Columbia, one for being the best technically skilled surgical trainee, and another for the best surgeon teacher among all surgical trainees from all departments. Again, I'm your typical neighborhood nerd. And in every academic achievement I added to my CV, I felt a surge of worthness, and I felt a surge of acceptance. I felt full. However, that feeling never lasted long. Soon, I will be in a search for another task to do, for another achievement to excel in, looking for my self-worth, to prove my worth for myself and for the others around me. About a year ago, I came back home after eight years of training. I graduated to be one of few female pediatric surgeons in the region. I had eight years of sleepless nights, exhausting surgical training, 24-7 operating time, many achievements, and zero control over my life and my schedule. But I finally arrived. My dream was there. I became the surgeon I worked so hard to be. And I had one to two operating days a week. I had one clinic a week. I had complete control over my schedule, many resting nights, and a very flexible life. Instead of feeling full, complete, and happy, I felt empty. I felt small and I felt worthless. I couldn't sleep. I woke up at 3 a.m. every morning. I struggled to get out of my bed. I had debilitating panic attacks, and I could barely function. It was one of the hardest time in my life. And it shook me. All my life, I measured my self-worth with my academic achievements and accomplishments and now that I was not chasing another one, I couldn't see or feel my true self-worth. As if I did not have a reason to wake up in the morning every day. And in the darkest time, Allah sent someone your way. A friend who said frankly, Al-Ghalia, you are not only a surgeon. You are way more than that. You were so much more. So on a piece of paper, write down all the things that you love about yourself other than being a surgeon. And that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what I wanted to hear at that time. On a four by four yellow note, I wrote a wife, a partner, a mother, daughter, a sister, a friend, and many more. As if my life as a surgeon was not complicated enough, I fell in love and I married another surgeon who's here today. <laughs> and almost everyone I knew then warned me and said, al Ghali, if this relationship falls apart, don't be disappointed. Do you guys know that female surgeons have the highest rates of divorce among females, among all other medical professions? <laughs> It's not surprising. 
Our work is very demanding. We stay up most of the nights operating. It's very busy and it's not easy. So imagine, okay, two very busy schedule, over 150 nannies interviews, not joking, over two years apart, single parenting in different provinces, and many, many fights. Here we are 11 years later, and I still call him my best friend. Through my relationship with my husband, I learned how to manage my time to what suits both of us. We both learned to compromise for what worked for the both of us. And I love myself for the wife that I am. And that's a very important piece of who I am. Most female surgeons avoid having kids till after their training. Again, this is not surprising. Motherhood comes with lots of responsibilities. Many sleepless nights, midnight visit to the emergency room with your kids, pregnancy issues, miscarriages, maternity leave. And with that, we're always afraid that we're not gonna have an enough hands-on experience and compromise our training. And then we graduate less capable compared to our male colleague. As a mother surgeon, I had my own share of suffering, suffering and struggles. But I am blessed, alhamdulillah, with two incredible girls. I actually had my first girl just before starting my surgical training. She's 10 years now. I missed few parent-teacher conferences, but I attended the most. And I was busy lots of weekends, but I learned that quality comes over quantity. And I made sure every weekend together counts. My relationship with them is very beautiful. They leave me love notes in my books and in my study papers, and their smiles and hugs make a difficult day at work so much easier. And I love myself for the mother I am. They taught me how to prioritize important things in my life. And because of them, I became strong. And I learned to be even stronger against the guilt of not being physically around, physically around them all the time. I come from a very large family, six brothers, five sisters, and I actually decided to pursue medical profession after the loss of my brother 16 years ago. And since then, it's been my passion to become a surgeon. Big families are incredible, but they're also very loud. So um, many fights, again, very loud, crowded gatherings, and unlimited sharing privileges of everything that you have. But it also comes with endless support. And I always felt guilty for not being there and being distant, you know, pursuing my passion, training to be a surgeon. But what mattered is that I was there when they needed me the most, the way they were for me when I needed them. And I am very grateful for that. Through my family, I learned to be grounded, to be kind, to be compassionate, and I love myself for the daughter and the sister that I am. Let me tell you that surviving all of these years away um, would have been impossible without the friends I had, amazing group of friends. Most of them were strangers, became family over a few years and months. These re relationships taught me how to trust, how to support, and how to be supported. And we're still connected after all of these years. And again, this is another piece of me that's very important. All of these pieces, all of these small, imperfect, but beautiful pieces, come together to form who really I am. Not only the things that I can list as achievements in my CV for a job application. And realizing this made me free, made me able to see my true self-worth and break myself from the vicious cycle 
of measuring my worth based on my ach academic achievement and be free for the first time and actually for the first time enjoy being a surgeon way more than I did before and love myself unconditionally. So let me reintroduce myself to you. I am Al Ghali Al Ma'wali. I am a wife to Humaid, a mother to Hala and Dana. I'm a daughter of Khalid and Sheikha, who happens to be a very happy, successful pediatric surgeon with a very impressive CV. And my message to you is that each and every person of you is a mosaic of so many beautiful, imperfect pieces. So when you feel down, gather those mosaic pieces together and look at the bigger picture of who you really are and what you are made of. Thank you so much.